everyone, and welcome to a very special presentation here at Collider Video, the Captain America Civil War spoiler heavy review. I can happily say that the longest two weeks of my life are now done with because I, like everyone else at this table, finally got a chance to check out Captain America Civil War. They no longer hold it over my head, and we hope that you, the home viewer, also checked it out because we're going to have a very intense spoiler heavy discussion about all the things that went down in this film i am thrilled to be joined by a very impressive cast here not quite as good as the movie civil war but nonetheless <laughs> the gentlemen here are barely how re regarded in the world of movies uh introducing themselves and when you introduce yourself i'd like you to say which team you were on going into the movie if you were leaning towards one side mr john schnepp hey everybody what's going on it's been so long since I saw this movie. It's we're just, all of us saw it like over a month ago. Oh, it's you been like almost like three months, right? That in. Mark just recently saw it like a couple days ago. Were you we team Iron Man or team Cap? I was going team in. Cap, and I'm still team Cap after going out of that film. So that's where I'm at. All right, Mr. John Campia. I'm not going to lie. A little bit of my joy has kind of seeped away now what? that Mark has seen yeah. the film. Because oh, well, I kind of well. like the fact that I didn't see it. I have been... Continue to be and always shall be Team Cap. Okay, Christian Harloff, I know you're happy I saw the movie, right? Well, the good news to let everybody else, he actually didn't even see it. We, we sent him to see the Roger Corman Captain America. <laughs> yeah, that's right. or whatever, yeah. whoever. The rubber red fruit right, right, skull. Right, yeah. right, right, right. <laughs> um, so actually, I was Cap going in, and I found myself on Team Iron Man. Wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And rounding out the Ellis bullying here in the early going <laughs> is Dennis Zhang. Which team were you on? Well, yeah, so I, I'm upset that we can't lord it over you anymore, that we've seen it and you haven't. But now you got the advantage because you've seen it more recently, so it's more fresh in your memory. You're damn right. Which team were you on going in? Um... Man, it was tough, but I, I definitely left kind of more Team Iron Man. So. Okay, yeah. I mean, I was always a Team Iron Man guy just because I like Iron Man a little bit better. He's more fun of a character to watch. I love the nobility of Captain America. I still am not sure which team I'm on after seeing it because I haven't had as long to digest the movie as you guys. But we all love this movie. I mean, this is something that we universally are going to celebrate, and for so many different reasons. So one of the things I wanted to start with was the just the overarching, and Dennis, I'll go to you first, what did you love about this movie? What was it that you left the theater and you're like, that's why this is a great film? Uh, that it was fun, but also not just fun, but it had a plot and story and characters that we actually were emotionally invested in. And, the, and that the, the, the fight between the two sides we can get behind both both sides. Like, you know, you asked in the beginning of Team Cap, Team Iron Man. It's not like we're all sitting there like, oh, Iron Man all the way or Cap all the way. It kind of falls in the, it's just kind of a little shades of gray where you're like, maybe one way, maybe another way. Uh, I, I think it's, it's one of those things that a comic book movie that does the philosophical differences well. And, and, and obviously the action was well executed. The acting in it was great. A lot of comedic parts in it, but it didn't ruin it. Every character got, its, it got his moment. That's right, and and John, there's some there's some specific things about the film that really stood out to you upon seeing it twice now, which nobody else here has done yet. Well, um, first thing I gotta mention this because I know you guys would appreciate this because we're, we're fight fans here, but except for this guy, um, so I, I'm at the world premiere, right? And they at the world premieres they always bring out the cast on stage and introduce the cast and the director and the filmmakers. And about five minutes before the movie starts. I see, walking up the aisle, Bruce Buffer. And if you don't know who Bruce Buffer is, he's the ringer announcer for the UFC. So, I, And I've played poker with Bruce a few times, and I thought, oh my gosh, if they get Bruce Buffer on stage to introduce everybody and do, <laughs> it's time! If they do that, that's going to be awesome. But the lights go down, and he sits in his seat. And I thought, oh, they're not doing that. But then who comes walking out of stage but his brother, Michael Buffer, the boxing commentator. So he comes out, introduces both sides, does the whole, let's get ready to rumble line. And the whole auditorium lost its mind. It was a fantastic experience. They really did a good job with that. One of the things after the second viewing of the movie that really stood out to me, and this is something they have done extremely well with the Tony Stark character. The Tony Stark that we get in this movie and I said this in Iron Man 3 as well, but it's continued to evolve. This is not the same Tony Stark that we first get introduced to at the beginning of that first Iron Man movie. He has changed, he has evolved, things have been happening to him and we see the scars on him. So much so that when you're going into a, a Captain America Civil War movie and somebody tells you, hey, 
Uh, Iron Man's going to be on the side of authority. He's going to be on the, the side of government. I think that's not the Tony from the first movie at all. No, it's not. But it is a perfect, logical chain of events and character evolution when you understand everything that has happened to him, what he has done, what has happened to him, and a combination of all those things. And then you see where he's coming, where he's now, and it makes total sense when you reflect on his history in these movies. And there's a lot of great stuff that we're gonna talk about during this review, but if you're gonna ask me for one thing that really stood out, it's how perfectly well they keep evolving this Tony Stark character. They've done it brilliantly. That's right, and you mentioned evolution, and one of the things that I liked about this movie the most is that the evolution of the difference of opinions between these two teams is yeah. that it's not just one thing. It's not just that we have these Sokovia Accords that we're gonna sign, and oh, I don't think we should sign it, and then other people are like, oh no, we should sign it. There's also somebody evil pulling the strings behind the scenes, and that would be Daniel Brühl's character, Zemo. And we'll get into how you guys feel about him as a villain, but I did like the way that they set up this world that gradually you see Iron Man and Captain America have more and more of difference of opinion, and it's not just, hey, we have political ideologies that don't jive together. You also have the factor of Tony Stark having to look at his parents be murdered. You also have Captain America having his heartstrings pulled by his friend Bucky as well as Zemo, knowing that he can pit them against each other. And that's the only way to eliminate these superheroes is by having them beat the crap out of each other because certainly no Marvel villain has been able to step up to the plate to take care of that yet. Christian, what are some of the things that stick out to you as far as, man, they knocked that out of the park? I mean, the airport scene and in, oh, the, God, in yes. the introduction yeah. of Spider-Man. I think like that the way that they just put all of that together because we knew it, we saw it in the trailer, and we were going, okay, they're playing the Spider-Man card. Uh, they're letting us know Spider-Man's in the movie. How is it going to play out? And boy, does it play out. And it not only plays out from the great setup of Spider-Man in the previous scene through introducing uh, Marissa Tomei as Aunt May to where everyone was saying, hot she's Aunt too May. hot to be Aunt May. And Tony Stark tells you, that's a hot Aunt May. Yeah. Right? And, and okay, we accept it. Just like that. And I thought that. But leading into that airport scene and watching it because it could have been exhausting. For 20 minutes, whatever it is, it could have been exhausting. 18 but it, minutes. 18 yeah. minutes. For what it is, you're sitting at the edge of your seat, you're watching it because that's why you went to the movie. You were promised Civil War, you got Civil War, and even though they had the joke, because John, Mark, when we were at D23 and we saw a little bit of this clip, they showed Black uh, Black Widow and Hawkeye, and Hawkeye yeah. fighting, and there was like a little joke, and we're like, oh man, it's just going to be like little jokes they're going to make up. Civil dispute. Be, no, it's going to be right. civil it's, dispute. A, it's a scrimmage, huh? not right. a fight, right? Right, but civil it plays argument. into it, though, because ultimately Black Widow kind of turns on the other side anyway, so it really made sense that that line yeah. would happen, so I got it. It was everything and the motivation behind it from Black Panther um, and, and but seeing Spider-Man when he shows up and why he was on the side, why everyone was on everyone's side is what I bought. Why they're yeah. all there fighting. They weren't there just fighting because it's like, oh, they're supposed to be fighting. And it's just like, I understood why every, I thought they did such a good job in two hours and what, 27 minutes, however long the movie is, mm -hmm. of setting up everyone well to where I knew why they were fighting for what they were fighting for. Because when I walked in going, 227, is this just going to be a really long movie just to be a long movie and it wasn't it was it no. was too short almost sure. it, it, so i thought that was handled well but i think everyone talks about that airport scene for what it established what it accomplished and when they placed it was perfectly placed in the movie i'm so glad you brought up black panther too because going into this everybody <clears> knows oh spider-man he's going to be in it he's going to steal the movie and tom holland as spider-man was magnificent yeah. i'm so excited about spider-man <laughs> homecoming or whatever the name of that movie is going to be but black panther might have still, he, he's my favorite kitty on screen since yeah. Puss in Boots. That's how good he was. And seeing the depth of that character, he's not just popping in there for a cameo either. We got so much of the backstory. Getting this, he sees his father die. The mantle gets passed to him, and now he has to assume this Black Panther role, and he's going after Bucky. So not only was it Team Cat versus Team Iron Man, you have individuals on each side who particularly have a vendetta yeah. against one other character. And if that means I have to run through some other superheroes to get to that person, I'm happy to to do it. Schnepp, as the director of the upcoming feature, Aunt May, was Spider-Man the guy that stood out to you the most, or maybe was it a different character? You know what? I mean, Spider-Man was like the hit for me because I had a lot of uh, trepidations like, all right, how are they going to handle this third incarnation of Spider-Man? Even now that it's in the Marvel Universe, we just got a little bit of flavor, but from the very introduction with Robert Downey, when they show Queens on the screen, you knew what was gonna, coming. Every you're all going to explode. Everyone in the audience is going to erupt. And his backpack, and you, and it almost looked like Spider Man's eyes. Everything, was perfect. everything about like you get the little video clips of him as Spider Man. That Robert Downey Jr. is well, uh, Tony Stark is basically saying, "Well, look, I've been monitoring you for a while, kid. You know this and that, but we can fix you up. You know, so obviously that scene that you see in the airport, it's some Stark technology with the eyes moving. A lot of people have already guessed." 
past that. They're like, look, it's a it's an Iron Man Spider Man outfit. I love the introduction of Spider Man. The airport scene. I guess the Russo brothers told me it's seventeen minutes, but you know, okay. I don't know how long you know it really. Still, what do Russos know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know if they're exactly <laughs> correct on that, but like seventeen three. Um, but uh, yeah, Spider Man was p- fantastic. I loved the uh, story arc of Black Panther and how that he was literally a force that just drove through the other people's story arcs. Like mm-hmm. every time you thought something was being resolved, he'd show up. He's like an agent of chaos. Like, no, I've got my own mission. He had his own storyline and they were able to connect it. I mean, you're talking about like five or six different really tough storylines that keep interweaving and reconnecting and changing your perspectives and how you feel like, you know, like I still went out feeling like I was on cap side, but honestly, like, Stark and like you're like you were talking about like his story uh, is, has changed since Iron Man one and now he feels that heavy weight of having like gone to another universe to save our planet and then open this doorway as well as creating Ultron and creating like this horrible thing that happened in Avengers Age of Ultron so the collateral damage that Stark has on his on his shoulders is viewed differently than the way Captain America or Steve Rogers looks at that collateral damage it's like we saved the rest of the world and some people have to die. And I think it's like that kind of perspective where it's like they're at odds when the government comes in where Stark is like, I need someone to watch me. And Rogers is more like, look, if I don't, you know, it's not to say I don't trust anyone, but like, I need to go with my gut. Like if they send us on a mission that we don't believe in. And so it's like kind of laid out right at the very beginning of the film. And it's from that point where you're kind of like forced to pick different sides and perspectives. And I think all of us, like while watching the movie is like you're emotionally drawn into this film until the final ending. When you when you mention like Tony Stark, they really just they really push the Winter Soldier and Stark's family together with, a you know, that that uh, Bucky basically, even though he was like brainwashed, killed Stark's parents brutally. That is what becomes that war between like Captain America basically has to save his friend from being torn apart by Stark and in total revenge. So that, I mean, if you're not emotionally invested by that time in the movie, you're like, that's horrible. It's horrifying to see that, but you're on both people's sides. Yeah, I mean, the emotional investment that this movie forces the viewer to have, it it helps enhance every action scene that follows it because, like, you're right, you, you can't make an on without breaking some eggs is kind of what Captain America's default motto in this movie is because there's a lot of death that goes on that has gone on in Sokovia and other places, and you believe it in this movie. They're not trying to hide the fact that, yeah, there's a lot of collateral damage, but that's the price you pay when we're not perpetrating these events. We're trying to save as many people as possible. Mm-hmm. And even though we're superheroes, we simply can't do it every time. I felt like the airport scene was an emotional purging of a lot of those feelings that the superheroes had. Mm-hmm. And they're just going to start taking it out on each other. And it's great to hear Christian and Schnapp gush about the airport scene. John, I want to go to you next, particularly about that 17 to 18 minute sequence. For me, it was seeing the fact that there's a warm up battle. And then that's over, and it's like, man, that was a really good airport scene. Because I saw it after these guys, and I knew there was, an, there, there, was, there was that scene. And I'm like, those guys are right. That was pretty awesome. And then it's like, oh, now the real airport scene begins. Mm-hmm. Ant-Man blows up, and my head did at the same <laughs> time. <laughs> what stood out the most about that scene to you? Well, first of all, the one bad thing about that airport scene is that it makes everybody forget about a very solid opening act first action scene of the movie yeah. when Cap and his team are going after Crossbones right. and stuff like that. That is a solid, solid action sequence with some really great stuff in it. And then that airport <laughs> sequence comes along and it's so mind-blowing that everybody totally forgets about this incredible piece of cinema that we saw at the beginning of the movie. Uh, great so undercard, but just got dwarfed yeah. by the main yeah, event. Dwarfed yeah. by the main event, right? And so that was kind of, or, and then you can argue that the main event was even later when Cap and Correct, Bucky right. because that was pretty mm-hmm. spectacular yeah. too. So that it's unfortunate about that. What I did did really appreciate about that big scene at the airport was it became a microcosm of what we've seen Marvel do so far, starting with Joss Whedon when they did the first Avengers. We all said, how on earth can you have all these freaking characters in this movie and not have a bunch of them just be ignored or have it feel too crowded or whatever? How are you going to give everybody their due? And this airport scene becomes a small sample size of a greater truth that they found a way in that fight scene that everybody had their what they call the Wrestlemania moment. Mm. Everybody had their <laughs> moment. Whether it's Scarlet Witch pulling stuff. Like she had about three or four big moments right. where she turned the ties of things. You know, Rhodey had big scenes. Ant-Man obviously had major big scenes. scenes. <laughs> big scenes. <laughs> real big scenes. Uh, Panther. Uh, Scarlet. I mean, they all had their moment in that big fight. Especially, I mean, you had some really good Spider-Man stuff. I... 
Here's the thing about Spider-Man, and I think it's it's highlighted most. I mean, look, it's no big secret. Spider-Man had two scenes in this movie. Very good, very significant scenes, but two scenes. And a lot of people have been asking me, and I'm sure they've asked you guys too online, is this is Tom Holland now, is this the greatest Spider-Man we've ever had? My insistent answer to that question is, there's no way to know yet. It's too small of a sample size. We got one really good scene with Tom Holland as Spider-Man, then we got one really good scene of a CG Spider-Man. And it's too, but but we liked what we saw. But talking about overshadowing that middle, that, that big airport fight overshadowing something else, I think our excitement for Spider-Man showing up and how good Spider-Man was used has made a lot of us, me included sometimes, completely miss the fact that there was another character introduced in this film, and I think they nailed him even more than they nailed Spider-Man, and that was Chadwick Boseman as Black Panther. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Like from the moment he came on screen and started talking, you're like, it, it, it's, it's Black Panther. Mm -hmm. They weren't looking for a Black Panther type. They actually went out and got Black Panther. Mm -hmm. And he became, and the, you, the way you were describing him, the way that you had two sides, but then you had this third dimension in there. I love the way you described that, of him driving his own agenda right up through the middle of this yeah, thing. Revenge. Revenge. Uh, and that, and his role in that middle fight as well. It's just uncanny because you started to get the feeling. Whoever goes toe to toe with this guy is going to lose. You just started to get that feeling. And I love the way they handled him. And again, look, I still want to see the movie a few more times. I'm just saying, I'm playing with this idea that not only do I think this airport scene is the greatest action sequence we've ever seen in a comic book movie. I'm debating him. I'm give me a few more months, but I might end up saying this is the greatest action sequence I've ever seen in Hollywood cinema. Period. I can't. Wow. The way Christian described it is right on the nose. Mm -hmm. you, 17, 18, 20, whatever minutes long, you're completely on the edge of your seat, lapping in mm -hmm. not only the great action but the great entertainment, the humor. dialogue on the humor, but also the dramatic turns. Yeah. All happening within this one incredibly crafted sequence. Blew my mind. You Captain the, America, I'm sorry, Captain America, Queens. I'm from Brooklyn. And it was and that. it was added in a way, and this is what so, you know, there have been moments where the comic book movies have hit, thrown comic uh, comedy in there sometimes and it hasn't worked. Like yes. for me, some of the stuff in Thor didn't work well. But you there is a there is a version of this in that scene where you throw in humor and it doesn't work. But that's not the case for this. They threw it in, like you mentioned, the Brooklyn Queens, because it all was relevant to what was happening. It never felt irrelevant. And to see... You don't usually talk this much in a fight. Right. Like, <laughs> it, was just, it was perfect. It, all of it, or it, or even just, the, can you move that chair up a little bit? And No. No. Oh, that, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. But, I mean, yeah, and yeah. I think that that's the way that they did that well. But I thought, I just thought that it, it was it was set up really well. And what Schnepp was saying before with Black Panther, and even with Tony Stark at the end with, with Winter Soldier, is that there was the constant theme of revenge, of what's right, what's wrong. Because the thing with Black Panther is... That scene when he's chasing Winter Soldier and they're running fast through the oh, oh yeah. man, it looks yeah, so that's good. another entire action scene that also is so great it's because so it's good. like it's a Winter Soldier breakout scene where he basically fights one on one yeah. every single person on the team who was unprepared. Right, well, that's so mean, different than the. And then also scene. Black Panther, he fights him without his suit. Right, he fights Winter Soldier. Yes. And he goes, he holds his own with yeah. him. It's yeah. like wow, this guy has some massive skills. Yeah, he does. And like the, that scene, I mean, just because you look at what Tony Stark, Tony Stark was so blinded by the end, and I'm sure we'll get into it later on, mm. what problem is that, or we can talk about it now. I mean, the fact, some people are saying at that very end, when Tony Stark is watching that tape, right. that he should, that's, I've, many people have said to me, uh, come on, he, he knows that at this point that he's being played, and I'm like, you just watched your mom yeah. and your dad, their neck just get snapped and brutally killed, and the only person in front of you is the dude that did it. Right. I don't care if someone's saying, but he was brainwashed. That's the dude that did it. I'll deal with the brainwashing after I kill him. Yes. And for me, and Black Panther arguably could have had that same reaction. He was going after Winter Soldier, but he didn't seem to be driven by that blind rage. It was the rage. It was mm -hmm. the revenge, for sure. But there was that peace that Chadwick Boseman brought to it. Even when he was like... It's crazy. He wouldn't, hurt, he wouldn't hurt Black Widow or anybody else getting involved. It was more like if they were getting in front of him, it was more like... Step aside, please. Right. I have to do this. And, and that, that's why the airport scene was so brilliantly done to me, is that it wasn't like, like Cap just taking his shield and just bashing Spider-Man's head in just didn't really make sense. It's like you don't even know who this person is. They're a gnat in your way to get to what you really want. And before we move on to that final action scene, which maybe the best thing that did is it, it followed the airport scene well enough. And it mm -hmm. wasn't like a Mission Impossible 4 Ghost Protocol situation, which is a movie I love, but nothing followed Tom Cruise on the top of that building, right? You couldn't follow with the next action scene. Dennis, the airport scene was brilliant, but they managed to follow it with that last fight between Cap, Bucky, 
and Captain America. Yeah, that was more emotional, Iron like Man, yeah. we, we talked about with Tony Stark. But back to the airport sequence, one of the best things about it is that it wasn't confusing. <laughs> we talk about a lot of yeah. movies yeah. that we see big budget action. It's like we complain like, oh, something, you know, just name it, like something like a Transformers. They have nonstop action, but it's like, I don't care. Can't follow what's yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah, I can't follow yeah. what's going on. I don't give a shit about the characters. I don't care about any of that stuff. Where this one, you're emotionally invested. And not only that, the, the individual fights with everyone is very coherent as well. And then but follow that up too with the cinematography yeah. of the fight. Because I think yeah. that's one of the things that the, there is this plague in Hollywood right now with directors who don't know how to direct action. So they try to compensate by having rapid camera yeah, movements right. and all this Super kind of stuff that stuff. you just can't, like you're saying in that Transformers movies, what you end up, the cinematography they chose for these fights, you were always in every single frame. I was frame. getting nervous with that though, because in the beginning, that opening scene, they did use a lot of shaky cam for the beginning of it. I mean, and it just, and it worked. It worked. born identity. There was, there was, yes, some there of was it. a little bit, of it, I but was they worried, smoothed that right it, out. It was, it was I there and it was it. done. I liked it. No, but I mean, no, no, given I, the I scenario think, and the yes. Situation. It worked in that situation. What I was worried about was that it eventually was going to overtake the entire right. movie, and it didn't. Yeah. No, and then obviously that Captain America fighting Spider Man, like I was getting it's like fantastic. misty eyes just because I never thought I would ever see that happen. I mean, we've known for so long Spider Man's with Sony. Right. Marvel has all the other ones. We're we're just never gonna see it. They took all those chances. Giant Man fighting Spider Man, <laughs> oh, and yeah. then he I takes him out like the, the Empire Strikes yeah. Back. Come on. When he it mentions, and mentions, I know. It. I saw the toy, and I still did didn't think it was going to happen and they did it and the way like, they shot Yay! him like even in kind of like that slow motion yes. just i mean so many uh, kudos to the russo brothers and everyone involved in that entire airport scene because not only do they mix and match all the characters and superheroes that's every chance that just because the way it is is like you're never going to get this chance again who do you want to see fight who like so mm -hmm. they just they swapped it up i love the the shot of spider-man chasing after um, Winter Soldier and uh, and Falcon mm -hmm. when they were in that airport terminal, he's yeah. just like kind of scuttling along after them. Just these little like little fight scenes were just so much fun to see. Like then they break away and you see this other scene with like a giant man growing and or Vision kind of floating inside Giant Man. I thought Vision was gonna do that like I become solid inside of Ant Man, Giant Man, kill him. I was like because that's what he could do, but instead he just kind of floats through him. Well, all that was, that was my series. one question, and it's the reason why I need to see the movie again and again, is because I want to see what Vision is doing during that 17, 18 minutes, because he was the one character. I was like, what does what this guy do? Like, he had some scenes in there. He used the laser to fry something. And then he, he accidentally hit a uh, war machine. It, just seemed, like, Cody, it yeah. just seemed like Vision was on the sideline most of that fight. And I'm not. And maybe it's because Vision didn't really have a dog in it. He's like, look, guy, we can't oh, kill him. He, 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 he took about some hits that fight. And he was also he, really concerned about Scarlet Witch. And, yes. and they, they made that pretty clear. Yeah. Towards the end, there I thought too, where it was just like that, and that's from the comics as well, mm -hmm. I believe, because he was. I liked how he was he's almost like becoming like a little human. You know, there's there's snippets in where he's well, all the comedy fans cooking, out there. You know? Yeah, yeah you know. I mean, there's a lot of comedic yeah. humor with him. With him and, sure. and Everyone's concerned about Scarlet Witch and Vision. Are they going to eventually get married and have little baby androids? They're, you know, I mean, they they, <laughs> they develop their relationship a little. You see it go a little bit further as far as they get to know each other because they're kind of forced to like Vision is basically babysitting Scarlet Witch in this film where he's like, no, you're on lockdown. And then she shows him what lockdown's all about. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's like I think I like the way they develop the characters from the introduction of Age of Ultron into this and I think you're going to see that kind of flourish more like I'm sure in Infinity. And talking about yeah. Giant Man, mm -hmm. I want, I've almost forgot when you talk about he, he becomes giant and we never thought that was going to happen right. he becomes that. Then one of, not the best line of the movie, one of the best lines of the movie comes shortly thereafter that where things are getting away from Iron Man's side and Iron Man's flying around if anybody else has any unrevealed <laughs> super abilities, right. Right. now is the time to let those. Right. Such a well timed. I'm so line. glad you bring up that line because one of the the hallmarks of Marvel movies is the humor, and this could have been the film where it gets very dreary and it's like Civil War and heroes are fighting each other. It's not looking good. It's really funny too. There's a lot of good humor in but here, but the humor never. It, ne it douses it, it the never importance of the heaviness the, of the drama, the seriousness yes. of, of the politics involved. But what, like, like some of my favorite scenes are with Falcon and Bucky, where they just don't like each other. <laughs> They're sitting in the back of the or, or Bucky's in the back of the bug, and he's like, "Can you move your seat up a little bit?" No, no. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, even with the Spider-Man scene, like he's just like, uh, "You couldn't have done that five minutes ago." Whatever he says, like as Spider-Man chasing and Falcon finally takes him, out, he's like. I hate you. Or he yeah. says to him, yeah. Yeah. yeah, whatever it was, those lines that their their chemistry was really good. But I think that uh, something else I wanted to touch on before was because with that blend of humor, it was also the perfect blend of emotion. And what I thought is why you get a Robert Downey Jr. to be in in this franchise 
is that scene when they're when William Hurt is telling them about everything, and he you learn Tony Stark's stance on it, and he doesn't say a word. Yeah, he's just sitting in the back, and they even call him out for it. Mm -hmm. It's the most mm -hmm. quiet you've ever been. But if you well, watch like earlier with that scene down by the elevator, the high that, school, like, the everything high school. was just so that was well great. painted Rough. for you. But yeah, watch him, watch watch him in that scene. Watch uh, Robert Downey Jr. in that scene. You're focused on him, obviously, but watch him, and it's just he is thinking like the character it's not robert johnny jr sitting there it's tony stark and he's thinking about all everything that's being said and you see him that's why i started to get on his side that's why i started to get on tony stark's side because the points that were made about being regulated and why he thought they should be regulated not that he thought that he should just listen to them but that there's there's too many consequences that we can't just run rogue like any other organization <laughs> i just thought it was i'm like all right i, I kind of see but that's that. why i'm on cap side because yeah. hydra be, you know they took over shield and basically cap was just being used as a tool for the government but the bad government so right you got it i mean that, that's where that line is drawn. Yeah, which is the reason why Cap maybe doesn't trust them as exactly, much as a guy yeah. named Captain America should, which is why I'm actually, I'm at odds with you now because I see more Captain America's side walking out of this movie if for no other reason than watching those scenes when they're at their new government base. Right. It's like, dude, if there's a crime going on somewhere, it's going to take so long to like sign the paperwork <laughs> to rent your suit back out and then get into yeah. it and get fitted, whereas your superheroes, you have to work like that. You have to already be there before the action goes down. That's why I'm a little bit more Team Cap. Now. Well, and we talked, I talked a little bit earlier about the evolution we saw in Tony Stark, but we also see that evolution in Captain Rogers at the same time, because from Captain America 1, the, the first Avenger, that's the guy who is Gung follow ho. orders, rah-rah yeah. mm -hmm. America, like, I, like it's all about the government following chain of command and orders, that's that guy, but now we've seen him get chipped away at and chipped away at and evolve and evolve to the point where it's like, you know what? I've seen what happens when I just follow orders blindly. Bad things happen. And so you know, we get these two great characters with great evolution, and we don't know where they're going to go from here. And it just set it up so that dramatically, like I think when you guys were saying it earlier, you just buy into it and you believe it right away because yeah. you've been on this journey with them. A lot of people ask us, do I have to see all the other Marvel films to appreciate Civil War? The answer to that is no. You can go into Civil War, Coral, and you're going to have a great time. But to fully appreciate some of the more masterful strokes going on with mm -hmm. character development and the dramatic elements, having seen those films will give you a much, much deeper appreciation. It's a hell of a point because you step back and you think, okay, way back in what, 2008 is when Iron Man came out? Yeah, And we've been on this journey for eight plus years and it's like, to have all this come together, we're not even talking about Infinity War yet, to have all this come together in a film like this and to see it play on screen as well as it does, it's like, it's all been worth it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Everything that we put into these, even when we saw like Iron Man 2 and maybe didn't love it, it's like, everything has been worth it to get to this point and that is summarized in that final fight scene where I want to talk about not only how great it was technically as an action sequence but also the emotional toll that it took on everybody. Schnepp, I'll start with you. When you're actually watching Iron Man versus Captain America and Captain America finally puts the shield right into the heart of Tony Stark, mm. did that have the emotional weight that you wanted it to have? It definitely did. I think it's like when, from the reveal that Tony Stark's parents were killed by the Winter Soldier, when you're watching that tape and you're there with Tony Stark, you're like, oh my God, you know, you feel that emotion. And then you also see Captain America having to admit, I knew it. Oh man, it's like a betrayal. So from that moment on, all the way to the end fight scene, I was like really emotionally in on, I didn't want to see any of them die, but I felt like they could have, you could have seen Stark kill Bucky and it would have almost been like, he's, you know, he has to do it. But at the same time, Cap has to protect his friend because he says, look, I mean, he didn't do that willingly. He would have never done that willingly. This is the guy I know. And so that's where those lines come in where you're like, well, I thought, you know, we were friends too. All that kind of stuff comes into play. I'll say this, you know, we haven't talked about the villain yet, but honestly, I don't think the villain was important to this movie. And it's like most of the villains have been, you know, we, you know, not that great. And some of the in some of the films, the Marvel films like Malekith, we we'll mentioned like Dark World, they're little you know, they're like half baked a little bit. You're like, all right, the villain or or there's a bunch of robots you have to destroy for Age of Ultron or a bunch of the Chitari for the very first Avengers. Like kind of like, oh, turn that what click that one thing off and they all deactivate kind of the there's not any stakes to it. This was real stakes, even though the villain himself wasn't like a guy putting on the Zemo mask. It was actually an assassin whose family was murdered. And to me, it was like just that kind of like it was definitely a plot device and a linchpin to move it forward. But I didn't need a villain. I was like this. It was so much more important to see 
T'Challa not kill the guy who actually did kill his dad and just take him down. And I thought it was the, the hero's journey of Black Panther from the very beginning of taking on the mantle of his dad and then actually becoming someone who doesn't murder. Like, who, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it became like, he, you saw his story go forward and kind of mix in with the rest of like Iron Man and Captain America's story to the point where you didn't really need the, the villain himself was a metaphor for collateral damage. You well, know? If, if you want the villain to stay alive, you were definitely rooting for Black Panther then because seeing him at the end of that fight as well, Dennis, is something where it's like that's a change of a character from who we saw before where Daniel Brule was just ready to end all. He's like, Zemo's like, this is the end of my path. And Black Panther's like, ah, not so easy. How'd that scene sit with you? Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. It was it, when when Christian was talking about the the blind revenge that that, that Tony has, Black Panthers was more of a sense of justice, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, he wanted to get revenge, but it was a different type of revenge. It was for justice purposes. And so at the end, he realized, look, even if I kill this guy, that's not going to help me in any way. And with, with the Tony thing, like, at first, you know, when he meets them there, you're, you're thinking, well, he kind of decides to team up with him. And I'm, and I'm sitting there going, well, how is, how is he going to end up into... Because we've seen the, the fight in the trailer already. How is he going to end up fighting them? Like, what can it be that pulls him? And then, obviously, probably one of the biggest things you could, you could have motivating you to fight someone, the death of your parents caused by this other guy. So I think that was good. In terms of the villain, yeah, I don't think... He was more of a plot device, and he didn't have to be there. But at least the difference for me between something like this and, you know, people are going to yell and scream about difference between me, this and Batman v Superman is with Lex Luthor they took his character and then there was supposed to be a philosophical difference between Batman versus Superman they tried to do that but they didn't at, ultimately at the end Lex Luthor just like oh I kidnapped your mom and I'm gonna kill her and that's a different motivation for, for Superman in this one the villain he sets up these different things to get them to fight but they still philosophically have those differences he just amps them mm -hmm. up and so when they do fight it feels more organic versus what we saw in, in Batman v Superman. You know, the problem that I had with that, I mean, because I agree with you, the, the villain, he he was fine for what he was. He served yeah. his purpose. I wasn't, I didn't need him to you be. You didn't need a Thanos. I didn't need yeah, him right. to be. The problem that I had with the main scene was it was a little convenient. It was just was a little convenient. Like, hmm, I'm going to get them to come out here. I don't even know that Tony Stark's really on my, that he's, that he's on their side, but I feel like he's going to chase them over here. And then they did. And then it's just going to magically work out that I can show them the tape. Yeah. It's just, that was a little too, too convenient for me. But once it happened, I was like, okay, I take it. I, I accept it. it. It was a total, it was a puppet mastery play. And I, John, I'm not sure. Did you feel this? Because because I, I resonate with what Christian just said, because I, I feel like that was something that, if that was the one convenient thing, that's fine. But I also, because Tony Stark cracks a joke five minutes ago about Bucky being the Manchurian candidate. And it's like, <laughs> that's right. It, it, and I know that he just saw his parents get murdered. Okay. I, I, I can appreciate No, no, the line happened first. Then he saw his parents uh, yeah, get murdered. Right, yeah. right, right. And, and I can appreciate that, that, that it hurts watching your parents get murdered by that guy who you just had a joke about. But you also just had a joke, which indicates that you fully well know that he was not himself when he did it. Hmm. So either. I don't think that Tony Stark is going to go that hard after Bucky, or I don't know that Captain America is going to fight that hard to, to keep Iron Man from Bucky, where eventually Captain America might just be like, all right, boys, I, I can't kill. I, you, you guys have both meant so much to me. Just because I was, I, you know, I was a soldier with you, and now I've been with the Avengers with you, go ahead and have at it. That's something that I felt might have gone down more plausibly than what did, but it's a little tiny thing. I hear, Look, I... Go, first of all, going to that, that final fight, okay? I didn't just feel, watching the fight, this is just me personally, I didn't feel that Cap was fighting Iron Man just to protect Bucky. I kind of got the feeling from the fight that he was also fighting to protect Tony. To protect Tony from doing something he ultimately oh, would deeply, that's deeply, fair. deeply that's fair. Stay down, stay down. So I kind of felt like he was fighting for both of them in, mm -hmm. in, in many ways. With T'Challa sparing Zemo, I also see that a little bit differently than you guys do. I don't see T'Challa having a big philosophical shift in his mind. It's like, you know what? I don't think I want to kill my enemy. I think if Zemo got up and started fighting Panther, I think he would have ended up being thrown off that cliff. But I, the feeling I got was like, T'Challa saw, wait, you want to die? Well, then you ain't going to die. That, that's the way your punishment is just starting. That's the way I, I kind of saw that as well. And I'll also differ with you guys on the villain because I personally, I think you guys are going way too easy on the villain. To me... As magnificent as this movie is, Marvel, once again, shits the bed with their with their villain. And I think, Schnepp, you nailed it completely. The movie didn't need him. They set up the philosophical 
uh, conflict so well. They did such a good job setting up about why Tony and and uh, Rogers would be on totally opposite sides. You didn't need this superfluous villain to be dropped in there. And then if you were going to drop him in there, at least have him make sense. I understood his, his motivation. My family got killed. Okay, his motivation. But every single one of his actions after that made no sense to me. You talked about the convenience yeah. of there is no way. There's no way he would have just assumed Tony, Iron Man, is just going to show up. Right. And this was the pinnacle of his plan, to have Tony see that tape and all that kind of stuff. You simply did not need him there. He didn't have to be there. Everything from how he broke into the, uh, it wasn't S.H.I.E.L.D.'s offices anymore, but wherever they were holding Winter Soldier, it's like, really? Just because you got a fake badge, you were able to get into the, like this top secret place and conduct get alone with this guy when even Rogers can't get? Like, all those things were such... A failure. It was a failure. They failed with the villain. Fortunately, 98% of the rest of the movie, yeah. which was not about the villain, knocked it out of the park. And I'll say this, at least that this, this wasn't the movie that Marvel's like, hey, see, we can have scary villains too. Like, this isn't a movie that they were using They weren't to trying to do so, They just didn't need them. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so they just I didn't need them. So Schnapp's I didn't need right. Zemo to be like, 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 like what we were talking about with Thanos. Like, I think we're going to get that fine in Infinity War once that happens. Yeah. This was more hero versus hero, and the villain was one of the hidden motivations to have them go at each other. Dennis, we've heard from Christian and John a little bit about some minor problems, or maybe not so minor, that they had with the movie. How about you? Were there any flaws, anything that you walked up being like, ah, that could have been better? Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree that the villain was a weaker point. The reason why it, it's more of a pass is because it, he really wasn't needed. They didn't interject. I'd rather him kind of be a throwaway versus him being fully invested into the storyline and then messing it up. You know, like he's in there and he does some things that we, we question and they kind of make it more convenient for the for the superheroes to fight. Um, There isn't too much about it. I mean, I, th I thought maybe uh, some of the CG needed some work. I mean, Young like, yeah, it, yeah. like it just some of it, I, I bet if they had some more time, they, they could have brushed up on. Um, yeah, I, I think that's about it, though. I Which mean, scene? The Young Downey scene? The no, just in general. Like, well, even like some of the opening, action sequence. That opening action sequence with Cap versus Crossbones, like, I found, like, some of the, what you would consider to be some of the simpler CG elements, an overhead shot of looking down tank, yeah. of a tank and a truck going in and out of traffic. And it's like, dude, that looks like it's right out of a video game. Right. Like, some... some Simple stuff. They still they have a few kind of days blow. to fix it. If they, you know, yeah, that's right. They might have, yeah, maybe you know, right. they, they, you know, when they screened it last month, they were like, "That tank shot." We heard mention of that a few, you know. So maybe there's, you know, a couple people are like quality control people. Maybe it's easy to replace a couple yeah. shots on a digital. But print. it didn't ruin it for no, the no, experience at all. No, it was I, just something I noticed. Yeah. I was like, huh? huh right. I, I personally like, like the the faults that you guys had in it. The, or found in it are so minute to me like the Zemo character didn't really bother me at all that we didn't have a central villain who was like oh I'm going to take over the world or anything it was more personal it was like obviously like oh you, you messed with the wrong bad guy kind of like he was already set up as like he's this crazy global assassin and you killed his family so yeah it's convenient and I agree with you the convenience of him you know how did he break in to this you know this top secret bunker and get a one on one with a winter soldier and you know they show you a little bit where he was like crossing off and torturing these guys from Hydra. So it made a little sense to me from the superhero universe. If this was like a real, like a real, like this is fat based on facts, <laughs> I'd be like, I call you on that. Right. But I, I give it, I give these uh, action adventure superhero films a little bit more suspension of disbelief so that it wasn't like, it wasn't like upsetting to me that he was able to get his machinations together to they'll all meet me at this base and I'll have this thing. Is it a little convenient? Yes, but it didn't bother me that much especially because the overall story was so well told that this one character, and I didn't feel a disagree with you with Black Panther. He says there's been enough death. So I personally don't think that he was ever had that. Once he actually realized all of us have been pawns to this one dude and it's all about death and murder and he wanted revenge for his family. My family's been, it's like, it's enough. You're going to serve time in jail. If he came at him with a gun, yeah, he's off the cliff. But I think Panther had come through like this, his own forged, you know, like, emotional journey so I felt like it was cool that he went through that you know you know what Zemo was consistent with though is is uh his theme I mean he yeah. was it consequence yes. I mean that's that's the one thing that I thought I agree with everything that you said about him but I think that as far as consistency with theme that this was a guy that you can't just use those powers going into what Tony Stark was was saying and what they were fighting for mm -hmm. you there are consequences so someone inside of that with these abilities mentally too just a little disturbed 
this was why these whole chain, this whole chain went into event because of what they did there in Sokovia and these other things that happened. Like who know who knows what else they this event. It just shows you it's happened throughout history. Like these these things that have happened, these world events that have been done for good, have spawned some you know evil because of hurt and pain. So I liked that what they were trying to do with him. Like I understood I understood that. I just think that he might have been unnecessary overall. That was really really deep right there. <laughs> it was very well done. I mean. Yeah. You know, as we put a bow on the whole conversation, it's and you're thinking about final thoughts about this movie, is that Schnepp brought up a great point with suspension of disbelief, where when I walk into your run-of-the-mill superhero movie, I'm going to have some of that. I'm going to bring that in and sit it next to me because I know I might have to go to that bag. I didn't have to go to that bag in this movie a tiny bit at the end when we're talking about it's very convenient that everybody showed up mm -hmm. to play this game. But you're also talking about two superheroes who are no longer just normal human beings. It's not just Steve Rogers versus Tony Stark, who already are worlds apart. You're very competitive people who've been saving the entire galaxy pretty much for the last eight years. So when it comes to blows, you're not going to want to take second place to anybody, regardless if it's somebody who you'd have considered a friend for the last decade or so. So overall, this movie has been, it's on, it, it's fighting right now with Iron Man, the first Iron Man with me for my second favorite in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You're never going to replace the experience of seeing the Avengers on screen for the first time. But what Civil War did have was a great movie that I knew I was going to get going in. So that's the box of Cereal, the toys at the bottom of it were mm -hmm. more than I ever could have hoped for. That airport scene, I, I tend to agree with you, John, at least as far as the Marvel Universe goes, the most well-done action sequence I've seen in any of these movies, and it's something that I don't know Infinity War can top, and I don't know that I need Infinity War to top, though I'm sure they're going to have some goodies for us in there. My rating for this movie is going to be nine and a half out of 10. I can't quite oh, that's get right. it right. You didn't 10. get a, You didn't get a chance to rate it yet. I didn't get a chance to schmo it either, but my schmo would be, thank you. My schmo would be 4.75 out of 5 schmoes, and so I'll go 9.5 out of 10. There's just those little nitpicky problems I had, but walking out of the theater, I had the biggest smile on my face. I had, like all you guys in your stupid Instagram pick that I wasn't involved in, everybody's doing the Panama face. That was a great pick. It was it was a a great pick. I'm, I'm so gonna, glad I was there. Yeah, where, where are you standing at that pick? I'm going to have our good friends, the Russo brothers, put my... Put Put me in there. Somebody CGI me into that picture because I needed yeah. to be a part of that experience. Mark, we're happy wait to you're check a it part of the again. experience now. You know, uh, yeah. It's though, too late, Snap. Thank right. you. Hearing you rank that, though, I'm curious where everybody would rank like the top three. It's a great question. Movies, like, yeah. you know, cause well, we'll start with you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'd like to hear your final thought about the movie and then wrap it up and let me know where it ranks in the pantheon of Marvel movies. Well, as far as the overall summary, it's 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 like we we've been saying. It was it's just it was a really well done film that combined every element that we needed to, whether it be humor, uh, emotion, and action, which you look at these guys, the Russo brothers, who, who would have thought that two, th uh, three, four years ago, you'd be saying these guys are some of the best action directors and filmmakers in general right now, what mm -hmm. they're doing. And the action scene from the, the scene up top to the airport scene to the last scene, to, I mean, there's so many different scenes you could pick out that it ties together, and I know this reference has been done so many times now, how we said that this is just an ongoing television series to where you're taking the characters through and through. This, this almost, this was a good season finale, mm. um, leading us into a brand new series, which will indeed be in the Infinity Wars, and it took all the characters and all their journeys, and didn't just, they weren't just thrown in there, and it was just a nice blend of everything we wanted to be, minus a subpar villain. Uh, as far as where I would rank th this in the, um, the Marvel Universe, for me, I have number one, I have Winter Soldier as my number one, then I have Civil War as two, and then the Avengers as three. Um, wow, the okay. reason why, because I don't think you'll ever be able to take away from me the way I felt from the Avengers when I walked into the theater and saw them for the first time all together, but that's a great moment as far as I thought that Civil War, to me, emotionally told a better story than than the Avengers. Um, I'm not, again, not taking, you never will replace that moment of seeing them for the first time. But as far as what this has done and continuing the story, which could have been hard so many movies out, I thought it knocked it out of the park, so it's number two for me. All right, Dennis, you're up. What was Final your score? I oh, scored yeah. it. I scored it on the oh. last on the last well, time. Yeah, for, uh, for I, me, I who wasn't it, participating. I'd keep it at. I think I had it at a, a nine out of ten. I yeah, I, think I would. Did, I yeah. would keep it at nine out of ten. Uh, 10? Okay. Yeah, I had a nine point three. Uh, I still want to see it again. Uh, I think one of the great things too about it is it captures the spirit of the comic book. I mean, I had mentioned it in uh, Russo's interview about uh, the, the airport scene, and people are like, "There's no airport scene in, in the comic book," and that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the spirit of that sequence, uh, and I think 
even though they take out the whole secret identity thing, we still have the philosophical differences that were in the comic book in this. And they also, when we talked about uh, Tony Stark's motivation, there's a scene in the comic book that's similar that, to what happens in the movie. It's not exactly the same. It's, in this one, he's at an elevator, and this woman comes up and talks about you know, his, her son that got, died in Sokovia. So it still captures the, the spirit of the comic book, and they were able to execute it and also mix in what they had done before in the Winter Soldier with with Bucky, with Captain America, just everyone gets their moment to shine in this in this film. The pacing is is fantastic. We I, I never felt like it dragged on at all. All the characters, all the action was I, I was smiling throughout the film. So yeah, uh, for me it's tough. It's in it's in my top three of the Marvel movies. I'd probably put like Iron Man and Avengers and this movie in the top three. Uh, Winter Soldier probably was my third, and I probably I have Civil War above that, so that'll be probably number four. Okay, cool. Schnapp, let's go to you. Yeah, I mean this film, just as a movie, not even a Marvel film, but just a film and it's on its own, is so entertaining and exciting and fun. I mean, that's what I got out of it. I was like, I ran the gamut of emotions. I laughed. I almost got teary eyed. I just was into this film from the very beginning to the very end. And that's really hard to say about a lot of films. Yeah. So not just a Marvel movie, but just a film in general. So for me, I, I gave it a 9.9. .9 and like three weeks out from still seeing it, it's still a 9.9 .9 for me. It is like an almost. From still seeing it again. Yeah, well, I you yeah, haven't seen, seen it. No, I haven't seen it again. No, just <laughs> seeing it. Everybody the went to the clear. world for me. Yeah. Hey, I'm just saying, it's seen like, it. yeah, I've seen it. I can't wait to see it again. But just in my mind, like a lot of other films, like you see something, you have a couple days to think about it. Maybe it drops, maybe it goes up. You, you wait. And if you're a fan of film and cinema, you sometimes go see a film a second time or a third time or even a fourth time. So this film, I feel very confident about seeing it a second and a third time in the theater because it's such an amazing cinematic experience. So for myself, I gave it a 9.9. .9. It's still a 9.9. .9. I have very few nitpicks about it. The villain, like to me, once again, works really solely as a metaphor. I don't need all of the things to make proper sense as far as a real like real life type thing. But um, and also really, I, I love the uh, the challenge that the, the story puts on the viewer. The, the story gives you like these different uh, perspectives from both, uh, you know, if you're saying, you know, simplifying it as Team Iron Man or Team Captain America or just simply Tony Stark and Steve Rogers and the people who end up taking their sides. Um, it, it makes a lot of it, it. It challenges what you feel like in the real world when you come out of it and you're like, oh, I have to take certain stances and sides on all these different things that I do every day. And this is a film that really kind of makes you reflect on that in a different way. But it's also strangely incredibly entertaining. Nothing. Nothing can really top that airport scene. I said it's the best superhero action scene I've ever seen put to film yet. And I stand by that um, in a ranking for strictly just Marvel films. Um, I would definitely put this a little bit above Civil War for me, but be you, you, mean, you mean Winter Soldier? Yeah, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yes. Civil War is higher Civil War than is Winter, Winter, Winter Soldier for me, but you have to have Winter Soldier in order to make this movie make sense. So they kind of have to see them together in a certain sense for me. I, I can't rank one better than the other. They, they, they they're really truly a, it's truly a sequel. Um, and Avengers to me just stands on its own as a as a team film. This is kind of like a, like they said it's not Avengers 2.5. But it really is. So, you know, I'm trying to cheat here by not saying that I actually have one favorite It's hard or the and other. we're making it competitive because it's fun. I don't think that, yeah, and I don't want to make it competitive. I think they're all awesome. How about that? Fine. Well, now I'll go to the best friend of Bruce and Michael Buffer, John Campia, who will definitely <laughs> make it competitive. Your final thought and ranking, sir. Uh, what I cannot believe, looking back at this film, is how well, and we asked the Russos about this, uh, we asked them, how did you take a movie with all of these characters, give them all their due, give Ant-Man his, your shield, Captain America. <laughs> Line, which just killed the audience. <laughs> How you give Wanda the smackdown of vision scene, which that's the, one of the problems with this movie. There are so many great scenes that a lot of great scenes get forgotten and overlooked. Mm -hmm. That scene where Wanda takes down vision, it's like, oh yeah, you got an infinity gem, you're powerful, yeah. Bam! Right. And, like, and it's like, holy crap, that scene was awesome. That all these guys get all their due, and yet... From the beginning of the movie to the end and walking out, this was a Captain America movie. Mm -hmm. All at the same time. How they managed to do that, have that strike that absolute brilliant balance of the dramatic with the action with the humor. And when one started to get a little heavy, they pepped it, peppered in some of the other, and they just kept this brilliant balance throughout. Yes, I think they blew the villain. But that being said, this movie's just 
absolutely spectacular. I still hang with my nine out of 10 on this movie. I was just blown away by it. In the pantheon of Marvel films, I'll still have Avengers number one because like a lot of you guys said, mm. I, I just, I can't replace that experience. That first no. time in that that spinning camera shot around the Avengers standing together in New York and the, the, the Hulk beating the hell out of all the Chitauri and all, like, all the great humor he's adopted. The, the, all that stuff mm. was so good. <laughs> And I did say I had Winter Soldier just slightly above Civil War, but for now, for me, they're neck and neck. So it'll be one Avengers, one and one A, Civil War, and and a Winter Soldier. I, I just can't put one above the other at this point. They're both brilliant. Wow. Well, look, we had a great time talking Civil War. We want to hear from you guys. Make sure you comment on this vid and spoil away. Let us know what did you guys love about the movie? Did you have any issues with it? As the tiny little Ant-Man in this behemoth of pantheon <laughs> of awesome superheroes that I'm joined by. My name is Mark Ellis. I want to thank Dennis Zhang, Christian Harloff, John Campia, and John Schnepp for joining me here on Collider Video's Civil War Spoilers Heavy Review. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.